Hi, my name is Samantha Haas and I'm here to talk to you today about mocktails. Um, mocktails, of course, being all the joy and flavor of a cocktail with none of the alcohol. Now, if you're like me, you like those uh, mocktails to still have a deeper flavor, um, some of that richness, some of that bite that you get from a traditional alcohol-based cocktail. Easiest way to produce this is with, well, alcohol. Um, <laughs> and by that, I mean bitters. Technically, these have alcohol, but it's such small amounts and you're using such small amounts that you're essentially not alcoholic for your drink. Now, when I would talk bitters, most people think of this bottle, Angostura bitters. It's almost everyone has a bottle. It's very basic staple of making cocktails. However, if you're gonna venture out and you wanna create a more interesting and complex cocktail or mocktail, you're going to want a wider selection. Um, I personally am partial to orange bitters and for mocktails, I really love smoked chili bitters um, because they help lend a little bit of that heat and bite back into the back end of a drink. And you can experiment. This here is a batch of homemade pumpkin spice bitters that one of my friends made. It's not complicated. You're basically super concentrated and infusing something. Easy peasy. But not everybody has that time, so they do make them in bottles for you. <laughs> now, a really good example of how you can use something as simple as bitters to build yourself a great little mocktail is old fashioned. Your traditional old fashioned is a bourbon based cocktail and it has no non-alcoholic mixer. It is straight alcohol, just different ratios and the backbone of that flavor is built off of bitters. In fact, it's my favorite part of that cocktail and I tend to lean a little heavy on them. Um, so when I wanna have a non-alcoholic, less caloric version, I reach for the bitters. Now if you really wanna have some of that tannin and richness that you would get from a bourbon in this, you are more than welcome to use some black tea. Um, I personally like that it can be a little lighter doing it with just the bitters for the flavor. And of course, with any mocktails, just like making cocktails, you're gonna need certain pieces of equipment. I do highly recommend a cocktail mixer glass or even just a pint glass and a stir spoon. I also love a shaker. I personally use a cobbler. You can use a traditional martini shaker with the lid. I just don't like them because they are, they get stuck, it's fine. But for this one, we're gonna do some ice in our cocktail shaker, or cocktail glass, sorry. And then with the old fashioned, you're building on flavors of orange and cherry. Those are your garnishes from an old fashioned. But so I like to use both types of bitters to help lend that flavor. And I like to go a little heavy. So about three dashes, strong dashes of orange, three of cherry. Angostura is the bitter that traditionally goes into this cocktail, so we're gonna do two of that. And I told you I like smoked chili for the bite. Just one dash of that, it's strong. And you'll notice you can't even see it in the glass. You can see the color, no liquid here. Dashes are a couple drops a piece. You can afford to use several. They pack a lot of punch. Then we're going to mix that with just regular club soda. If we were a more patient person, we would not have it fizz up like that. 
But when you're working with a fizzy cocktail, always stir. Never try to shake. Everybody tries to shake because it's fancy. But it's not always the right choice. I'm partial to a julep strainer. That's going to be a big, what looks like a massive slotted spoon, essentially. And you're basically just going to... Pour that into your cup that has some fresh ice. Just like with cocktails, always fresh ice. Never reuse. Okay. And if I wanted to go really fancy and hardcore, I could go ahead and I could still garnish this just the way that I would a traditional old fashioned with one maraschino cherry and a wheel of orange. Oranges didn't look so great at the store this week, so we aren't doing that. <laughs> and it can be as simple as this. You'll notice it's taken on a little bit of a tint. It almost looks like it's a white grape juice from the color of those uh, bitters. And when we take a sip, we get a wash of First, that kind of orange note, and it is just very slightly artificial, waxy, waxy, very slightly waxy. Um, and you can cut that with just a splash of fresh orange juice um, if you really want to up that element. Um, but I wouldn't do that unless you're making this with black tea because you need that balance and you're going to get into kind of more of a citrusy drink at that point. Um, but then you get the chili on the back end as well as a little bit of that cherry note. So overall it's very light because, well, the main component here is club soda. We just made really lovely flavored club soda. <laughs> but it's also got some of that complexity that you would miss uh, just having a glass of club soda. And it makes you feel fancy. Now, stepping it up if you are looking for something a little bit more fresh than that and perhaps don't want to invest in bitters, um, they're expensive by the bottle, but they go a long way. But if you don't want to invest or don't have the space to keep all of these bottles, you might be interested in one of the other ways that you can rock a mocktail. And that is with the use of fresh ingredients. So we are going to start with some fresh lime, or fresh lime, fresh mint that I picked out of my garden. You don't need a ton if you're making this for one person. This is something that you can make in a batch, in which case you can be looking at those um, larger quantities, but in this case I'm using six to eight mint leaves. Not a mad amount. We're just going to muddle that into the bottom. Now, they do sell cocktail muddlers. Uh, they're made of wood. They are uh, ridged at the bottom so that you get some different um, texture. Once you have those kind of muddled up to release some of the oils trapped within those leaves, we're going to go ahead and ice into this glass, throw an ice cube across the floor, it's a sacrifice to the gods, and then we're going to take our lovely mint and ice, top it with a little bit of lime cordial, in this case I'm using Rose's sweetened lime juice, uh, really easy to find, really easy to get a hold of, you can of course make your own, I just don't. <laughs> And I usually just do a splash. If you're looking for a more exact measurement, you want to stay under a half ounce for one serving because it does pack quite a lot of sugar. And not using alcohol to make this drink, you're not having as many elements that can cut that sweetness. Um, so then we're going to take that lime cordial, mix it with, in this case, cucumber mint sparkling soda. We don't want to amp that up too much because the cucumber is its own separate flavor. So we are going to do half that half regular club. 
And if you want to add an extra kick of freshness, um, juice of half a fresh lime is going to get you there. So we're going to stir that just like we did our other. personally love the look of a drink served up so we're going to do this into a martini glass or wine glass depends on what you have and what your preference is and that's going to give us a lovely it almost is the color of a martini an actual cocktail, I would compare it to, say, a Gimlet or a Gin Ricky. More Gin Ricky. Reminiscent of a Gin Ricky with a little cucumber in love, because who doesn't love cucumber? You can play with all sorts of different sweeteners. The Lime Cordial is a great way to get there and incorporate some of that citrusy element. Um, but I also love honey syrup. It can be made as simply as one part boiling water, one part honey, st stir to dissolve. Store it in your fridge for up to a few weeks. Um, it will settle out a little bit. Cherry simple syrup, flavoring your simple syrups is a great way to incorporate more flavors. Um, in this case, I did this with the liquid left over from cans of tart cherries, canned in water. Um, mix that with sugar. You also can do that with teas. Um, chamomile is a great one to make a simple syrup out of. Um, and you do that just by brewing extra strong chamomile tea and then sit there and mix that hot tea with sugar, stir to dissolve. Make sure it is fully dissolved, otherwise you will end up with a gritty syrup. Um, from there, the key is to use fresh as much as possible. You are just like with making a traditional cocktail, you're going to get a better result from better ingredients. Um, fresh citrus juice is always better than using the bottled stuff, although the bottle will work, um, just won't give you quite that same depth. Sparkling sodas that have flavor are the best way to take a little shortcut that I have ever seen. Um, this one's grapefruit. <laughs> And keep in mind that if you want to use juices, because you aren't bringing in an element that is inherently bitter, um, like you would be with a traditional cocktail, don't use cranberry cocktail, use 100% cr cranberry juice. Try to find the juices that have less inherent sugar, that way you can play with sweeteners rather than producing something that's already sweet. This has been a very brief lesson in mocktails from Samantha Haas. Thank you and good night.